2 million lithium ion battery cells, fully automated lines, and a fire that burned for more than 24 hours. Something failed and it wasn't just the batteries. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. A massive fire broke out in the Mosel lithium ion battery plant in Kaohsiung, Taiwan, just a few days ago on July 14th, 2025, and it was an impressive fire. But as we've seen in past battery related incidents, the fire is only out for now. There will likely be multiple flare ups and the cleanup could take months, if not over a year. This facility was producing high performance battery cells used in everything from electric vehicles to aerospace applications. So the fire started early in the morning, around 5 a.m., and it quickly spread through parts of the production area where thousands of batteries were stored. The reports state the fire started in the semi-finished cell production area, and based on the descriptions, the translations, I believe that is where the cells were undergoing formation and testing. This is one of the most critical and dangerous stages of battery manufacturing. Before we get deeper into how this happened, let's back up for a second and talk about what it actually takes to make a lithium ion battery cell, because most people never see the process and they don't really understand what goes into it. Here's a simplified overview. First, manufacturers, they source all the raw materials, the lithium, cobalt, nickel, graphite, whatever the battery chemistry is, and they turn those very fine powders into almost like a flower, and it's going to be used to build the battery's electrodes. Next, the powders are mixed with binders and solvents. They create a slurry. The slurry gets coated onto thin metal foils, aluminum for the cathode and copper for the anode. Again, I mention it all the time, there's no elemental lithium metal inside a lithium ion battery. After drying and compressing, you'll end up with a very thin, uniform sheet that stores and releases the energy. Those sheets are then cut into size, they're stacked, they're rolled. It, it all depends on the type of battery cells. And there's an ultra thin separator that keeps the positive and the negative sides from touching. This assembly then goes into a casing and then the electrolyte, basically a liquid that allows the lithium ions to move back and forth between the cathode and anode, that is added. Now, I see a lot of people talk about lithium ion versus lithium polymer batteries. Basically, it's the same thing. There's still lithium ion batteries. It just, it's the state of the electrolyte inside that battery. At this point, it's starting to look more like a battery cell, but there's very little energy inside. But don't underestimate the hazard. They're still relatively unstable because they haven't gotten their first charge yet. Getting towards the end of the process, we're now looking at formation and aging. During this step, each cell is carefully charged and discharged for the very first time. This is where the protective layers form on the electrodes. It's a layer that stabilizes the chemistry and prevents those reactions that could lead to thermal runaway or fires later on. And that's exactly where they're reporting that this fire began in this Taiwan facility. In the area where the semi-finished cells, those cells that were filled with electrolyte and undergoing their first set of charges and cycling, it's a phase where the cells are both chemically active and really at their most vulnerable. It's also one of the first places they're going to find any manufacturing defects if there are any. Representatives from the company reported right around 2 million battery cells were destroyed in this fire, and they were most likely 2170 cylindrical cells, which they're about four times the size of a AA battery. And I'm not talking physical size, I'm talking about the amount of energy that can actually be stored inside the cell. Something else that's really important to understand is that battery cell production today is almost entirely automated. From mixing the slurry, to coating the foils, to stacking the electrodes, and even filling the electrolyte, robots and precision machinery do nearly everything. That's not only for efficiency, but it's also for safety and for quality control, because handling these materials by hand would be far too risky at this type of scale. Humans are mostly there just to monitor the equipment, handle the maintenance, and oversee the final inspections. Despite that level of automation, things can still go wrong. And in this case, Molcel's parent company said the facility was equipped with both fire suppression and fire detection systems, but it's pretty clear that those systems failed to contain this incident. When the fire broke out, it spread fast enough that over 90 firefighters were dispatched, and it took more than 24 hours to fully extinguish the smoldering battery cells. At least 15 people were injured. Most of them were workers, and that's where employee training is critical. Employees need to understand what to do in case of fire, and they really need to be trained. But some firefighters were also injured. The facility has been forced to shut down, and operations are going to be shut down until investigators find out exactly what went wrong. The big question, though, is what failed? 
Battery manufacturing is typically set up to be extremely safe. These facilities understand the hazards. They focus heavily on fire prevention and build detection and suppression systems directly into the production line. You'll often see inert gas suppression or water mist systems designed to flood an enclosure the moment heat or off-gassing is detected. And with the way these lines are isolated, you really shouldn't get into a situation where enough cells go in a thermal runway that it's going to overwhelm that suppression system. But in this case, it's clear they had the perfect storm of failures. Multicell has already started shifting production to another facility to limit the impact on the customers, but the fallout here will likely be long-lasting. There are going to be new detailed safety reviews, new risk assessments, and probably changes to insurance requirements for this type of operation. It's easy to look at these incidents and just think the technology is just too dangerous, but the reality is... The demand for lithium-ion batteries is only growing, and it's growing fast. We use lithium-ion batteries in everything today. That means the entire industry has to get better at designing facilities, the automation has to get better, and more importantly, the suppression systems that can keep pace with those risks, that has to be improved.